The sun has just risen in Memphis, Tennessee. It's a beautiful day. Welcome everyone, Adam the Woo here. It's my second channel daily vlog channel. It's the Daily Woo. On the corner of Mason Street and Tapton Place is the Church of God in Christ World Headquarters. And on April 3rd, 1968, a very important and now very famous speech was held inside those doors. Bishop C.H. Mason founded the Church of God in Christ. And if you read closer to the bottom, he is entombed inside the Mason Temple, which is also this structure, the Church of God in Christ. I'm very fascinated by stained glass windows in churches. This one is a little different. There appears to be a man in a tuxedo engraved in the stained glass workmanship. And it was behind these very walls that Dr. Martin Luther King gave his final speech, referred to now as the I've been to the mountaintop speech. One of the things that really hits home for me when I listen to those words and I watch that footage back of that night and I am paraphrasing, is how he was saying how he would like to live a long, prosperous life and how longevity has its place. But he was content with maybe not having those aspects. And the very next day, his life was taken from him. With the cityscape off on the horizon, we have to drive about a mile to the now famous Lorraine Motel. I should rephrase that as infamous because what happened there is very tragic. I missed my turn, but I'm not complaining because I'm always excited to drive through these old bridges. And there it is. The motel itself preserved to look as it did on that day. Just a brief moment past 6 p.m. on April 4th 1968, Martin Luther King was standing on that second floor ledge when he was killed. There is some video footage that can be found online. I believe it's from the day before where he was entering the motel and he walked up these very stairs and there's some photographs of him walking along that pathway to his room. In fact, one of the angles was from this very spot. One thing I did notice, however, is room 304 is in the same location, but 303 in the photograph was 307, but now it's 303. I'm not really sure why that was corrected in that fashion, but according to the photo, it was room 307 there, not 303, as it is current day. He stood on the balcony in front of room 306, and they have placed a wreath there in his honor. He requested that his favorite spiritual, Precious Lord, be played that night. Those were some of the last words he would speak. At 601, a bullet streaked across Mulberry Street. Official investigations concluded that the bullet came from up there. This is what the view from the boarding house window looked like, as well as a photograph of the men pointing up to where the bullet came from. Right across the street. His body laid right up there on that corner angle and it was taken down these very steps here. He was taken to the hospital and just over an hour after he was shot, he was pronounced dead. The Lorraine Motel 
is now home to the National Civil Rights Museum. It opens up in a few minutes. I normally get to locations like this really, really early in the morning before people start to show up and tourists show up. I kind of like to have a moment to myself, especially in somber places like this. Another interesting fact about this motel, the wife of the owner, the night that Dr. Martin Luther King was shot, she suffered a stroke because of that event on the property and ended up passing away a couple days later. I find that very interesting. Two dramatic events involving two separate people on the same spot on the same night. Please move to the back of the bus. I need that seat now. Please move back. If you can sit there in other buses, suppose you get off and into one of them. If you don't move out of that seat, I'll have you rested. Get up from there. They have a glass window looking into room 306, the room he was in. Cigarettes in the ashtray, food on the end table. And that is where he laid, right there on that spot. This is a replica of the 66 Ford Mustang that was seen leaving the scene of the crime that day. Behind this sheet of glass is the window believed where the shot came from. This is a picture of around the time frame when it happened. That's it. Out that open window, you can see it would be able for someone to get a very clear shot easily from this position. The toilet and the tub still remain in their places. But just looking at that angle, standing in this spot is... Wow, what a... What an interesting feeling to know what happened and to be in the same location. Wow. What a tragedy. A look at downtown Memphis there. The museum was pretty amazing. I learned a lot in there. Definitely check it out.
if you're ever in this area. Another interesting fact about the motel in the early 80s when it was bought by the foundation, it was closed and there were a couple residents who still remained. One of them being the lady across the street, Jacqueline Smith, who has been protesting ever since that day for decades, for 29 years and 35 days to be exact. Yes, ma'am. So they evicted you. What year was that? 1988. Because I forced them to. You forced them to evict you? Yeah, they just wanted to. They just told us to get out. I told them I wasn't going nowhere. And you've been here ever since that day? Yeah, they cut off the utilities in my room there. Which room are you in? 303. Room 303. So was it the room 303, the corner? Yeah. Over there? Because I noticed in a picture I found online that it, it was 307 at one time. I talked to Jacqueline for a little while, very nice lady. When she reminded me her name, she said, just think of Charlie's Angels. But there is something interesting about the room number, which still confuses me. I mentioned earlier about the confusion of room 303 and 307. She said she was in room 303, but this photo shows 307. You can see the top part of the seven has kind of been dismantled a little bit, just like it was in the photo I showed earlier of Dr. King walking past that door. So why was it changed from 307 to 303? She confirmed that's her room, yet the room number now is 303, but in the photos from that day, it was 307. Very interesting. I even asked one of the guys at the museum, and he said, oh no, that's always been room 303. You've always been the caretaker. And then I showed him the photo. He was super confused by it and bewildered and said he was going to ask around. He never got back with me. Who the heck knows? Out of all the little details of that case, the investigation, all that, why is that sticking in my mind so much? 303 versus 307. Why was it changed? And why doesn't anyone know? Things that make you go, hmm. Heading out of Memphis now. Cruising down the road a ways. Not even sure which destination will be in tomorrow's future. I haven't decided yet. I don't know how far I'm gonna drive, which technical direction I will be going, but rest assured, all will be unveiled, not only to you, but to myself by tomorrow. I'll see you then. Vlog over.